Hello and welcome back to this week's teaching. My name is Rose Romandi and we are studying the book of Galatians. In this video, we are going to take a look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 15 to 18. So our brother Paul has been talking to the, to the church of, uh, to the church in, uh, the Galatians church, let me put it this way, the Galatians church. And he's been trying to like um, explain and convince this church and make them understand that this gospel that we are talking about, this Jesus thing, you know, everything that happened in Jesus and in the gospel, it was first promised to Abraham long before it was even, there was even a law. And this is the main key in understanding of the grace. And, um, and I believe these verses are going to clear a lot of, you know, shadows and misunderstandings that we have or many questions that we might have. Because when Paul started talking to this church, he, they were the one who started in faith and started in grace. But then somehow they turned back to the law because they had some pillars of the church and the brethren that they put so much value on them came and told them that you're supposed to keep the law of Moses. And now Paul is trying to explain that, you know, all before the law came to the picture, there was a promise to Abraham. In fact, it was 430 years before there was even a law, God came and promised to Abraham that, um, you know, um, the, the blessing that is going to come to the nations or the inheritance in Christ Jesus. So that's why, uh, uh, you know, that's why this is really important. Like there is a question that, okay, if really God gave the promise to Abraham and it is by faith, why is it then, then, the, then the law came after, which is the teaching for another time. Which by the time we get to verse 19, we are going to take a look at that question. But because we don't understand that question, then we create all the doctrines and we try to, you know, say that, oh, we are supposed to keep the law because God gave the law. But Paul is explaining and say, okay, let's understand it. Let's just take away the law for a moment and understand the gospel. The gospel was first preached to Abraham. There was no Jews. There was no law. There was no Moses at the time. There was no 10 commandments. You shall do this and you shall not do this. It was just Abraham who was basically didn't have any, you know, any child or anything. And God came to Abraham and he promised something. And then he made the covenant with Abraham. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Let's read these verses together. And if you really need to pause the video and read it, because this video, it is the key to understand the gospel. Because once for all, it makes it clear for us that, okay, it's not by the works of the law and the law never was never given to make any effect in the promise that God gave to Abraham. In fact, the promise that God gave to Abraham, it was perfect. It was complete. We didn't need the law to make it perfect or to make any kind of effect into that promise. That's why Paul is trying to tell this church who is returned to the, God, to the law, tell them, what are you guys doing? Law had a different purpose and law fulfilled it, it purpose. And we'll, we'll get there by the time we get to the end to continue studying the chapter three of the book of Galatians. But now today, let's take a look at this. Uh, let's read verse 15 to 18 in Galatians chapter 3 and understand, um, you know, understand what the Paul says and then we are going to break it down. Look at verse 15. It says, brethren, I speak in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. So Paul says, okay, you know what, let me just switch to man channel from, you know, let me just bring that you know, uh, examples that we understand. We human beings, men, as soon as we make a covenant and we confirm the covenant, so we know that, you know, no one is going to, you know, change it, add to it. Do you see? No one is going to, make, to add anything to that covenant. Keep in mind, Paul is now trying to say that the covenant that God with, with, made with Abraham didn't need the law to add to it, to make that covenant basically perfect. Okay. So that's why, uh, he says, okay, 
in the world of us, you know, when we do, when we, when we make a covenant, we don't really, no one can, uh, um, no one announce or adds to it. So the word annul here means the word, it's, it means reject, okay? No one can reject the covenant, perfect, okay? So, you know, you say, okay, the, gov covenant, the covenant is no longer valid, or no one can really come and say the, co the covenant is not perfect, let's just add to it and make it perfect, or make it something else, okay? So basically Paul says, if this is happening in the world of man, so let's see like how much more this must happen in the world of God because God made the covenant with Abraham. So there is no man can ever come or nothing can ever come to make, okay, the covenant is no longer valid or it says, you know, um, we gotta add law to it to make it perfect. So now look at verse 16. It says, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Okay, so he does not say, and to the seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed who is in Christ. So I will come back to this part and I'll focus on this because that's another important concept to understand. But for now, we want to focus our, you know, we want to focus on these verses on the word covenant and, you know, uh, that Paul is talking about. I'll come back to the seeds and seed later in the next or the following video. So now, but in this video, let's continue reading and focus on the covenant. Look at verse 17. It says, and this I say, that the law which was 430 years later cannot annul the covenant that, the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. Okay, it says, you know, when God came and gave the covenant to Abraham, 430 years later, the law came. But the covenant that God gave to Abraham, it was confirmed before, confirmed beforehand, confirmed long before the law came to the picture. So, and then it says this, this covenant was confirmed by God, first of all, and not man. So now we can understand that if God makes a covenant, and then this covenant is actually, is not going to be changed, okay? But the law was added later and has nothing to do with the covenant that God made with Abraham. We'll see that later. But now here it says, okay, this covenant was confirmed by God in Christ. So why is it saying that the covenant confirmed by God in Christ it's because the promise that God gave to Abraham, it was to one seed, which that seed is Christ. So we have two things now. We have a covenant that has been confirmed by God before, long before any you know, law came to the picture. And also this covenant is confirmed in Christ, in the seed of the promise. So do you see, this covenant is confirmed by God and also it's confirmed in the seed. So, so therefore the covenant is not confirmed by man to be able to change it. And the covenant was not confirmed in the law of Moses. So basically God didn't say, okay, Abraham, I'm going to bless the nations and I'll you know, make a promise to Abraham. When I sent Moses to come and there is a law and the 10 commandment and this covenant is confirmed when that law is kept. So that didn't happen. So God promised that to your seed, I will give this land and this blessing and inheritance. Okay, so now look at verse 18. It says, for if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. You know, so I'll, I'll get to the word inheritance when we go to the word, to the seed there. But the overall picture that Paul is talking in these verses, it says, okay, let's take the law away out of the equation here and let's understand this gospel that we are talking about. It's the gospel that was preached to Abraham who was long before Glocke and God confirmed it and he gave, he said, this, pro this promise is to your seed. And, you know, and it says, and to your seed, I'll give you this land and all the other promise that it was 
given. So, so now here, here we go. Let's just take a look at a couple of verses here. Let me take you to Mark chapter 7, verse 9. So let's go to Mark chapter 7, verse 9. All right. Mark 7, 9. It says, uh, this is Jesus that is talking. And he's talking to some people. And he's telling them. And he said to them, um, all too well, you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. So he's talking to the Pharisees here and he's telling them you reject the commandment of God. So uh, the word reject here is the same word as annul that we saw in Galatians chapter 3 verse 15. So it says, okay, you know what you do? There was a commandment from God. And that commandment, you rejected it, you annulled it, you put an end, you made it void. And so because you want to keep your tradition. So do you see, we have the tradition of the elders, which are practiced under the law of Moses. And then we have the commandment of God. So, so now let me just take you to, um, uh, you know, actually, let me take you to uh, Galatians chapter 5. And I want to show you this verse too. Galatians chapter 5, and look at verse uh, 4. It says, you have become estranged from Christ. So this is the word that is used in chapter 3, verse 15, and it's the word no effect. Let's put it this way. It says, Christ has become no effect in your life. This is, the, this should, this is how it should read. So they cry, you have... The Christ has become no effect in your life. If, look at, let's continue, you who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from the grace. Oh, that's interesting. So you have fallen from the grace. So now let's take a look at this picture. It says you have fallen from the grace. Do you see the fall of man here? Do you see even in, Paul is writing to this book to the, to the Galatians and he says you have fallen so you are fallen there is a fall for this church that happened so you have fallen from grace so we can easily see the, what the fall of man was even way back in Genesis chapter 3 man fell fallen from man had man have been, let's put it this way, man have been fallen from grace all day long. But the promise that God gave to Abraham, it was true that, um, you know, that grace of the Lord Jesus and not by keeping the law. Let me show you another verse here. Uh, let me take you to um, Galatians. You know, so, you know, I'm thinking, let me see, I have... I have 15 more minutes. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at this. It says, therefore, if this God, therefore, this is what happens. If you are under the law and you try to keep the law, then the Christ has become no effect in your life. Okay? But now, if you are in Christ, okay, in Christ, in the covenant that God made to Abraham, then the law has, will be of no effect in your life. So do you see there is no shadow between the, these two? So if, you know, maybe this is the best place for me to share my screen the last few minutes so to make things a little more clear. Okay, perfect. So there was a man here, man here called Abraham. So when God came to Abraham, he gave a promise to Abraham. So I'm going to say this promise. He gave it to Abraham. And then that promise that God came to Abraham, he made it a covenant in the seed, which is the Christ. And he said, okay, you know what? Your seed here is going to come and all the promises that I give you, it will be fulfilled in this seed. So therefore, that promise that God gave to Abraham, it wasn't 
by the works of the law because we didn't have the law yet. So the law came here. The law came here. So now if I put here, this is the period of 430 years and this law came. So basically our brother, um, our brother Paul says, you know, this seed that we are talking here, this seed that we are talking here and this promise that we are talking here was never given, never given under the law. It wasn't in to be fulfilled under the law, but under that promise of the seed that God gave to Abraham. Therefore, if you remove the law from the picture, you realize that the plan of God, the promise of God to Abraham is now fulfilled in the seed. And because Abraham believed God, then everyone who is going to believe will receive the promise or the blessing of Abraham. Because Abraham stepped into the faith, therefore everyone who steps into the faith will receive the promise that God gave to Abraham. Therefore, because Abraham stepped into the faith and believed and it was accounted for him for righteousness, therefore everyone who believes in this seed and steps into that promise of God by faith, it will be accounted to them for righteousness. This covenant that God gave to Abraham, this covenant that God gave to Abraham, when the law came, law didn't add to it, the law, make, law made no effect into it. Law was given for another purpose. And by the time we get to verse 19, we realize what another purpose is, but I can explain. Let me just, just touch on it a little here before we move on. Look at verse 19. It says, what purpose then does the law serve? If the law, if the law was never given to uh, make any changes to the covenant or to make the covenant perfect. And if it was all from the beginning, it was by the faith and the promise to Abraham. And, you know, this law never made any changes to the covenant, never, you know, added anything to it. Why is it, why it was given then? Let's read it. So Paul answers this question because apparently this is the question that causes many of people go back to the law because they have been confused that we are supposed to keep the law because God gave the law to, Ab to Moses and that law that was given to Moses, it kind of confirms the covenant of God and or whatever or adds to it. And that's why we're supposed to keep it. But now our brother says, no, 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 no. The law had different purpose. The law had nothing to do with the promise that God gave to Abraham. Look at this. What, look at verse 19. It says, what purpose then does the law serve? Now, Paul asks this question. And then it says, let me just answer. It was added because of transgression till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Okay, so if we take a look, look at the picture here, and I'm going to remove this, all the lines that I have here, so to make the screen a little more clear. It says, okay, the law was added because of transgression. First of all, uh, there is a word that is missing here and the New King James translation that I'm reading doesn't have that word and that's the word grace. I know the word grace has been dropped out of translation here because I don't know why. So now, <laughs> so now take a look here. It says the law was added because of the transgression of the grace. So, oh, let's put it this way, because people rejected the grace and they wanted to do something, they wanted to achieve things by the works of their hand, then the law was given to them. If they would have believed, if the whole people, if the, um, uh, the children of Israel, they would have believed the promise that God gave to Abraham and stepped into that faith, then the law would have never given to them. Please hear what the Spirit is saying here. 
The reason the law was given, it's because of the transgression of the grace. They had fallen from the grace. They didn't step into the faith of Abraham. That's why even today, it doesn't matter if you step into the faith of Abraham, if you step, not the faith of Abraham, if you step into the promise that God gave to Abraham and you step into the faith with believing Abraham, you will receive what God promised to Abraham because, you know, God promised to Abraham by faith. So that's why here says, therefore, um, because they didn't believe it, because the grace that was given, the promise that was given to them, they did it. They, the law is given. So do you know what it says right now? This is exact, exactly what's happening to us. Even right now, we are years after Abraham. We are years after the law. And in fact, we are years after Jesus Christ uh, was crucified. And we are still trying to go back to the law that was given because of the transgression. So, so why? Because, you know, if you don't believe and you don't step into the faith, if you don't believe the promise and you step, don't step into the faith, you are saying, you know, that thing that God did is not working. So I got to do something about it. And I got to add to that thing that God said in order to make it perfect. I pray that you see how ugly it is. I pray how you can see how twisted it is that, you know, there's some out there are preaching another Jesus and another gospel and causing people to go back to the law and not knowing you are basically saying what God said and God promised is not perfect. And I have to add something to it by the works of my own hand in order to be able to make things perfect. And Paul comes here and says, guys, Let's go to the root. Let's understand it's a promise that God gave to Abraham. The law wasn't there at all. So why was the law? It, says the, the, it was added because of the transgression. So now keep in mind, the, this law wasn't added to the covenant and to the promise that God gave to make it perfect. It was added in the journey of people until they arrived to that one seed, the promise. Let me read verse 19 again. It says it was added because uh, of transgression of grace until the seed should come to whom the promise was made. You know, apparently there was a promise that was made for a day to come. Okay, and then in the between, if I share my screen here again with you. So in the between from Abraham here that the promise was given all the way to the seed, which is the Christ that come to the picture. So this law came to the picture so that he can bring all these people all the way to the Christ, which is the seed of the promise. And then. It is when our brother Paul gets up in Acts chapter 13 and he says, the promise that God gave to the father is now fulfilled. Okay. And then you realize, oh my goodness, all these times that I have been keeping the law, then it, this law never fulfilled the promise in me. This promise is fulfilled in the seed, the Christ, and God has done it without me any really um, making it perfect with my own works. Okay, so hopefully, you know, you see what's happening here. That this law in the middle had one purpose. It was, we read, that, we read it later, it was to finally bring you and I into a place of realization that it is not by the works. To realize that we are powerless, we can't really make what God said perfect, so that we can finally realize that the works of our own hand is just a filthy rag. The works of our own hands has adds no, nothing and no life and brings nothing into our life so that I can finally realize who can deliver me from this body of death, who can deliver me from this flesh that I'm living in, the law of sin. And then we realize that, oh, there was a promise long before there was a law. 
and God gave that and confirmed it in Christ. Oh, wait a minute, Christ came and it is fulfilled and I can just step and have the blessing of Abraham if I step into the faith that is available to receive this promise of God, okay? So, um, as I said, every time, this is the key, every single time that somebody talks about the law and somebody wants somebody to keep the law, we have to, we have to understand, we have to go back to the root, to, the, to realize there was long before there was a law, the gospel came to the picture. So the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ has nothing to do with the law. There was a promise to Abraham and it's now fulfilled. Law had a different purpose and it's expired right now. But if you want to keep the law, what Christ did has no effect in you. But if you want to stay in Christ, what the law did has no effect in you. Okay, so I was going to talk about something, Romans chapter 7 in this video, but it took me longer than I anticipated. So I'm going to end this video, and in the next video, I'm going to talk to you about Romans chapter 7. It's where God talk, talks about this annulling that you are dead, you know, your, your old husband is dead, now it's time to marry the new one, and and putting the next video with this one is going to complete this picture for all of us, okay? So bless you guys, and I will see you in the next video.